Here's an example of an optimization problem. So we have a box here with a square base of side x and a height of y. The box also has a top, okay? It, it has a bottom too. Um, we want to find the dimensions x and y for which the volume is 12 and the surface area is as small as possible. So we should start by assigning quantities to the unknowns. The sides and height have already been assigned variables. The one that hasn't is the surface area. So let's let s equal the surface area. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is we want to write an equation for the quantity to be maximized or minimized. In this case, we want to minimize the surface area, so we want to write an equation for s. s is the surface area of this box. We have the bottom area is x squared. The top is x squared as well. So 2x squared plus the areas of all four sides. The area of each side is x times y, and we have four of those. Okay, so this is called the primary equation. Next, we want to write an equation relating the two variables that appear in the primary equation. And that's called the constraint. The constraint in this problem is that the volume has to be equal to 12. So the volume is the area of the base times the height. So x squared times y has to be equal to 12. Next, we want to solve for one of the variables in the constraint equation and substitute it into the primary equation so that we have just one variable. I think the easiest here is to solve for y. So we have y is equal to 12 divided by x squared. And then we take that and substitute it in for this y. So our primary equation becomes 2x squared plus 4x times 12 over x squared. So that's equal to 2x squared plus 48 divided by x. The next thing that we need to do is write the feasible domain for the problem. Okay? Well, I know x can't be negative because it's a dimension of a box. Also, x can't be 0 because then there's no way the volume would be 12. So the feasible domain, in this case, starts at 0 but doesn't include 0. But then x can be as large as it wants. To maintain a volume of 12, y will just have to be smaller. Okay, so the feasible domain in this case is from 0 to infinity. All right, now we're going to use calculus. So remember, we wanted to find the values where the surface area is a minimum. So what we're really looking to do is find out the value of x for which s has an absolute minimum. So remember, absolute minima occur at critical points or endpoints. Okay, in this case, our domain is an open interval, so we have no endpoints. So we know that this function s has to achieve its absolute minimum at the critical point that it has, or if maybe it has more than one, at one of the critical points it has, that's where it's going to achieve its absolute minimum. To find critical points, we have to differentiate s. So we get 4x for this piece, and then 48 divided by x. Well, that's really 48x to the negative 1. So if we differentiate that, we get negative 48x to the negative 2. So if we simplify this, we get 4x minus 48 divided by x squared. And if we get a common denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom here by x squared, we get 4x cubed minus 48 all divided by x squared. Okay, so this is s prime. Okay, so um, now to find the critical points of s, we need to find out where s prime is either 0 or undefined. Well, 
s prime is undefined when x is zero. But zero is not in the feasible domain, so we don't care about it. Next, we find out where s prime is zero. s prime is zero if 4x cubed minus 48 is zero. So we find that 4x cubed is 48, or x cubed is 12, or x is the cube root of 12. Okay, so this is our only critical point. So this is where s is going to achieve its absolute minimum. Now we need to look again at the problem to see what our question was asking again. Okay, we want to find the dimensions for which the volume is 12 and the surface area is as small as possible. So what we're really looking for are the dimensions x and y. Well, we know x is the cube root of 12. To find y, we're going to use this equation right here. So y is 12 divided by x squared. So it's 12 divided by the cube root of 12 squared. Um, this can be simplified as 12 divided by 12 raised to the 2 thirds power and 12 over 12 to the 2 thirds is 12 to the 1 third. Okay, so the absolute minimum is achieved when x is equal to the cube root of 12 and y is equal to the cube root of 12. Okay, here's a problem for you to try. We want to find the dimensions of the rectangle of maximum area that can be inscribed in this semicircle. Press pause while you work on this one. Well, the first thing that we want to do is assign variables to the unknowns. X, since it's a point on the semicircle and the upper right corner of this rectangle, is this distance right here. Y, since it's the Y coordinate of the upper right corner, is this distance here. Finally, we're going to let A be the area. The next step is to write down the primary equation, which is the equation for the quantity to be maximized or minimized. In this case, we're maximizing area, and it's the area of this rectangle. So the primary equation is going to be A equals the length of the rectangle, which is x plus x, or 2x, times the height of the rectangle, which is y. Now we want to write down our constraint. The constraint in this case is coming from the fact that the upper right corner of the rectangle has to be on the semicircle. So we know that x squared plus y squared has to be equal to 16, because being on the semicircle means that it's a point on the graph of the equation of the circle. Okay, but we only have the upper half, so we solve this for y, and we find that y is equal to the positive square root of 16 minus x squared. Okay, so this is our constraint. Next, we want to substitute the value of y into the primary equation. So now that the primary equation just has one variable, we can just use one variable calculus, which is the calculus we're doing, to find out where it has a maximum. The next thing to do is write the feasible domain. Well, x can range from 0, in which case we're just going to have this straight line here, and in which case the area is going to be 0. Okay? So x can range from 0 all the way to 4 in which case we have this straight line, and again the area is going to be zero. Okay, so here we have our primary equation and our feasible domain. So now in this case, A can achieve its maximum either at the endpoints, which we know ahead of time it's not because at, that po at those points the area is zero, or at its critical points. So we have to find A prime to find the critical points. We use the product rule to differentiate A, and this is what we get. 
Um, we can clean this up by uh, canceling the one half that's being multiplied by that two there. Well, we could cancel it with that two; it doesn't matter. And then we end up with two square root sixteen minus x squared minus because of that minus there two x squared. And we're going to take this negative exponent and drop the term down to make it the square root of 16 minus x squared in the denominator. The next thing we're going to do is get a common denominator to write this as a single fraction. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom of this by root 16 minus x squared. And then we end up with 2 times root 16 minus x squared times root 16 minus x squared gives us just 16 minus x squared to the first power, minus this 2x squared, all divided by the square root of 16 minus x squared. So finally we have 32 minus 2x squared minus 2x squared gives us minus 4x squared divided by the square root of 16 minus x squared. So the critical points of A are the values that would make this either zero or undefined. A prime is undefined if x is equal to four or negative four. Since these are in the domain of the original function, actually, I'm sorry, negative four is not, so it's excluded. But four is in the domain of the original function, so we do call it a critical point. Also, we need to find out where a prime is 0, so we have 32 minus 4x squared is 0, which tells us that 32 equals 4x squared, or x squared is equal to 8. So from there, we have x is equal to the square root of 8, or negative square root of 8. Root 8 is in the domain, but root eight, uh, negative root 8 is not, so we don't care about it. Okay, so now we're ready to write down the possible places for the absolute max to exist. So it can ha happen at endpoints, which if we take a look at our domain, the endpoints are 0 and 4. Or it can happen at critical points. The only one we haven't listed is the square root of 8, which is equal to 2 square root of 2. All right, we talked a bit about um, ago about the fact that if x is either 0 or 4, then the area is equal to zero. So I know that's not going to be the absolute maximum. That tells me that the absolute maximum is going to happen when x is equal to square, uh, 2 square root of 2. So now I read the problem to see what sort of answer was being looked for. And we want to find the dimensions of the rectangle. We have x. Now we just need to find y. To get that, we're going to plug it into here. y is the square root of 16 minus x squared. So it's the square root of 16 minus 2 root 2 squared. And 2 root 2 is really root 8. So if we square it, we get 8. So this is the square root of 16 minus 8 which is equal to the square root of 8. So the maximum, the absolute maximum area is achieved when x is 2 root 2 and when y is root 8, which again is 2 root 2. So that's the answer to the problem.